truth is you cannot lead anybody to Jesus. Only Jesus can in you. And Jesus isn't flown through you and in you. You're not going to have much love with that. See, you can't manipulate people into the kingdom. It has to be God growing their hearts. It has to be God. And the more God is ruling over your life, the more He's going to influence people around you. Okay, so, so what did you do to your foot? Um, stress fracture and a torn tendon. Torn tendon? Yeah. And what couldn't you do before that you could do now? Put pressure on my foot. Put pressure on your foot. <laughs> and you're like doing the whole lift up thing. Yeah, it's not Yeah, coffee. there's your boot. <laughs> okay, any pain whatsoever, like test it, like yeah. put it to the test, like run on it. It's, Not weak anymore. No. Okay, can you find it all? Like, can you? Is there anything limiting you? Because if not, we'll pray more. No. Okay, no? and and you said it was black before we took it off, right? Yeah, it was black here. It was black there. Yeah, the whole top of it. Show the show the boot. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it was in. That's what it was in. Too bad you didn't bring your other sandal. No, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I'm just driving home. I can go barefoot. <laughs> it's so good. It's good? Yeah. Praise God. 100%. No pain. 110%. Like, 110%. Yes. Um, while we were worshiping, or even before we started worshiping, God, I just opened this Bible. I don't know whose Bible it is, but it just opened up to Jeremiah 1, and I know it's a scripture that everybody's heard before, it's just popular, um, but I just want to, I just want to say this over you guys today and just speak it to your spirits, and it's Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4, the word says, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Ah, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a child. You must go to everyone I send you and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, now I've put my words in your mouth. See, today I've appointed you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. So God, I just thank you for that word, Lord. I pray even now what you said about before we were even born, you set us apart. So God, I even thank you right now, Holy Spirit, that you have set every single person here apart, God that you have called them to be a mouthpiece to this generation. God, I pray even now for boldness. Father, I pray even now before Josh speaks the word from God. Lord, I pray even now, Holy Spirit, that you would just direct every heart, that every heart would just come to the attention of the Holy Spirit, that every heart would just become very sensitive to what you're saying today, God. As it is a new day, God, it's an honor to be in your presence, Lord. We thank you for the honor. We thank you for the favor that you have on each and every person here, God. I pray even now, Father, for minds to be open, for hearts to be open. God, I pray that you give us eyes to see. Open the eyes of our hearts, God, because we want to see you in a deeper way, God. And we all long to bring glory to your name, Father. So we just thank you for the honor, God. We just bless this time. Touch every single person, God, in Jesus' name. Last song we sang was a call to war, so I'm just gonna blow this. Mm -hmm. Those who don't know, this is a shofar, like in the Bible, they do this before they go to war, and angels would go fight war. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, we just thank you, God. This is your battle. We just get to love people. Mm -hmm. hey. <laughs> See that? I'm like, why do you carry that thing? Like, 
Well, let me show you and I'll pray for him in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, we just thank you. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, so, uh, God makes it so easy. He just says, fall in love with me. He makes it really simple, really easy. He says, look, fall in love with me wherever you're at. Just be in love with me. Focus on living me. Live before the audience of one. Amen. Like when, when you're living before God and when you're in a public place or you're in the private place or wherever you're at and your focus is on Him, it's, it's easy. And in that place of intimacy with Him, everywhere we go, it's like we get to carry that. <laughs> And I feel like that's the key to like seeing cities one. That's the key to seeing places change, people's lives transformed. It's not where we're going out trying to do something, but where we just love God in public and we love yeah. the person in front of us. And God makes it really easy. And it's, it's really sad because, I mean, we have the Holy Spirit. That means we're like jam-packed with God himself to back us up. And it's crazy because like a lot of people like, like, they kind of view the world getting darker, and it's just kind of like, oh, no, the world's getting so dark. Let's hide in our church, and Jesus, come back soon. Look look at the world. And it's funny because you read the Bible, and it's like Jesus saying over and over, the world's dark. Do something about it. Go. Yeah. Instead of complaining the world being so dark, go out and do something about it. Like, God, get your light. You can't point at the darkness and say, oh, you're dark. You should be light, you know? Your light, go to it, and it's going to be light. It's Come simple. You know? Gee, okay. To that passage. But. Okay. I'm, while I'm on the light, I'm just going to go to that scripture. You know, Jesus is the light of the world. Amen? Right? Amen. Amen! Amen. Yes. <laughs> we, we need Vladimir here. It's, it's really loud, like uh, Come Russian. Amen! Come on! Come on. Amen! Right. That is so funny. It's just a surge. It's just a surge. Yeah. But no, like Jesus is the light of the world. He came to bring, the world was in darkness. Jesus is the light. See, our issue is, like a lot of the issue with the church is we kind of point to the world for being dark without realizing that we have the light of the world. Instead of letting them shine, we condemn the darkness. No, we need to run to the darkness and bring light. And it's crazy because Jesus actually calls you light. See, Jesus is the light of the world, but he says in um, Matthew chapter 5, I'll get to it, verse uh, 14, it says, You are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hidden. You're the light of the world. You're set on a hill. N nor do they put a light in a lamp and put it under a basket or in a, a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house, or in this case, a church, saying, Oh, Lord, please come. The world's so dark. <laughs> you know? It says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. What good works? Jesus said, he who believes in me will do the work, same works that I do and greater. So it's the works that testify of our God. It's when we walk in power, when we walk and demonstrate and supernatural power, supernatural love, the presence of God. Just They experience the peace of God and a taste of it. Like God says, taste and see. The Lord is good. Amen. You see, we get to offer them a taste of what heaven's like and we get to show them what light looks like, you know? And it's amazing because we are light, you know? And then when they see that, it says they'll glorify their Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. See, that's why in Romans chapter 1 it says the goodness of God leads men to repent. You know, after it says that after this long list of all this bad stuff that they're saying that's worthy of death, but the goodness of God is what leads them to repentance. Come on. Yeah. Oh, so good. Now it's crazy. Now I'm going to go back on the, the church rant because I'm excited because God's raising up the church. I'm seeing church after church waking up to that. I'm like, oh, we have Jesus. Why are we hiding? <laughs> You know, it's kind of like people are waking up to the reality. It's all about love. And it's all about loving the person in front of you. The people who are in darkness, well, they need love. Come on. <laughs> the most hurt and the most broken, the most angry and the most menaced to society needs a hug from Jesus. Wear it That's up. That's right. Come on. That's <laughs> They're right. lashing out because they need Jesus' attention. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. But it says in Matthew 16, um, I'll get to it. Okay, 16. 
I'll start with verse 16, or verse 15. And he said to them, but who do you say I am? So Jesus is talking to the disciples. Um, all right, let me start at verse 13, just makes sense. So when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea and Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who, who do you say I am? It doesn't matter what people say. Who, what's your confession? Who do you believe Jesus is for you? Right. See, and Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious because I was just cracking jokes earlier about this thing falling down and me like getting on my knees to read my mind. <laughs> Since Jesus, our, Jesus answered, said to them, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. See, only God could reveal to somebody that he is God. Yeah. You see, it says in John chapter um, 6, no man can come to me unless my Father draws them. Mm -hmm. That's a reality, and that's also why some people have more grace in leading people to the others than others, but it's mm -hmm. because they're dependent on God, and it's God leading them through it. Mm -hmm. You see, it's God who leads people, and God desires all to lead, be led to repentance, but there's something about partnering with God where God does the work. Yep. See, you can't save anybody. God does. You can't open their eyes or open their heart, but the light that's in you, Christ in you, can yeah. See, when we become dependent on Him, He draws, when He's lifted up and He's exalted, He draws all people to Himself. He says that. I'm not getting that verse right now, but yeah. I will in a minute. But He says that. Yeah. Now check, so check this out. It says, and I say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. He's not talking to Peter. He's saying, Peter, I'm going to build my church on you. No, he's talking about the confession that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Mm -hmm. That's the rock. He said, That's look, on, on this confession yeah. that Jesus is the Son of God who came yeah. from God, died on the cross, and wrote, on this confession, yeah, yeah. I'm going to build my church. Come on. Now listen to this. The simple gospel, basically. Yeah. And I say to you, that, all right, it says, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Or right. the gates of hell. Who attacks with their gates? Right. <laughs> Like, seriously, think about that. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, no, the devil's so bad. We need to hide in a church. Let's pray and let's... Like, <laughs> like, like, the devil's not retarded. The devil doesn't take his front... Like, think of when this was written. They have castles. They have walls protecting cities, right? Right. The devil... Now, picture the devil in his castle, and there's this big wall protecting his castle. And the devil's like, you know what? I'm going to attack the kingdom of God. Hey, minions, grab these gates. We're going to take them off, and we're going to bash the other kingdom. <laughs> well, you really think... That's the mental picture Jesus is giving. See, gates are a defensive structure, not an offensive. Mm. That means we're on the defensive. Come See, on. we need to go to the gates of hell. Come They're on. not going to withstand us, and we need to kick them down and that's plunder right. its goods. Come on now. Come on! It's really, it's really. Wow. <laughs> and Jesus, we have keys. We don't even have to kick him down. We have keys to that That's gate. That's right. It says that I give you keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound on heaven. And the the Greek, it's actually will have been bound in heaven. Hallelujah. Yeah. So see, heaven, it's in it's in perfection. It's yeah. it's God's prayers. You know, my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. So right right there, the fact Jesus tells us to pray that. And uh, Matthew 6 tells us that God's will is not always done on earth as it is in heaven. His will is, his kingdom, it, my will be done, my kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Or actually, vice versa. But yeah. anyway, so his will is his kingdom to manifest, and he gives us keys to the kingdom to unlock just heaven's reality to invade the kingdom of darkness. Come and it's amazing because it says whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven. That's basically what he's saying there. He's saying, look... There's no sickness in heaven, so what you bind on earth, it's going to have heaven's reality. Amen. It's going to release heaven to manifest that. It's Come going on. to demonstrate. See, uh, the whole message of the disciples in Matthew chapter 10. Verse 7, it says, As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely receive, freely give. Amen. That's like the first message of go, go preach the gospel. Jesus didn't say, hey, 
I want you to go and I want you to understand their language. I want you, I mean, understand the way they do things. And then I want you to try to apply this message to how they do that. And I want you to understand evolution and, and learn how to debate their evolution. Because, and, and I want you, you know, Jesus said, no, go. Demonstrate my power. Show them the kingdom of heaven's at hand. The message is there's a kingdom coming. Jesus is going to reign over this earth. And he's okay. coming. And he's coming with a vengeance on those yes. who don't believe. Mm -hmm. And he's coming to restore the, weak, the, the meek and the righteous. Yeah. You know? Amen. We have the perfect king who's coming to reign over That's the earth. He's right. coming. Yeah. So our message is saying, look, the kingdom of his reign starts now. Yes. His reign starts over your life right now. So the message of the, the gospel of the kingdom of God is, hey, we're here to represent to you the kingdom of God and what it looks like. And gee, this king that's reigning over my life is coming to reign over the whole Come earth. On. You're either on his side or against him. Come on. Come you on. know, and that's the message. But here's the thing. The kingdom of heaven's at hand. We could grab it. We could show it. We could reach it. And he says demonstrations of power show and prove that the kingdom of heaven's at hand. Yeah. That's the gospel Jesus came and preached. Come on. You know? Hallelujah. He, that's a little bit more than say a prayer and get to heaven on get out of hell. <laughs> See, this gospel is not just a get out of hell card. Come and on. it's sad because when people come to the Lord for a get out of hell card, they don't understand the mission. They don't understand the relationship they have with God. And then they can't figure out why they feel so empty or why mm. God seems up there or this yeah. or that. It's because God's inviting you to live his life yes. come on. on this earth. He's inviting you to demonstrate his rule and his reign. Come and on. if he's not ruling and reigning completely over your life, you really don't got much to demonstrate, do you? Come on. Woo! 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 The kingdom! Wow! Come on. Oh, wow. You have to go there. Huh? <laughs> wow. That needs to be a Facebook quote. Wow. <laughs> just, yeah. So good. That, that's a life quote. That's a li that yeah. needs to be a life lived quote. Yeah. Now check this out. Do you know the devil has no rights to anything? That's right. Like a lot of people, they're like, well, the de they're sinning, or they did this, or they did that, and the devil like thinks he has all these rights. But do you realize Jesus paid for the whole world on the cross? Mm -hmm. Like Jesus isn't like dying on the cross every single time somebody sins. Yeah. It's like, okay, I'm covering all the sins of the past, but tomorrow I'm going to have to die again because they're going to sin again, and tomorrow I'm going to have to die again. That was the issue with the sacrifices. They had to continually offer sacrifices, it says in Hebrews, as a reminder for sin. Jesus came, sin's done. It says, Behold the Lamb of God who covers the sin. No, who takes away the sin of the world, right? So if Jesus takes away the sin of the world, then it's in his hands to forgive you. It's not the devil. The devil has no authority anymore. Mm -hmm. It's all covered. It's there. It's in his blood. You see? It says, now check this out. Turn to John 12, verse 31. It says, now this is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out, and I'm yeah. lifted up from the earth. I'll draw all peoples to myself. Yeah. Right it's now. good. So we could go on the premise that whatever garbage people are in that we come across, it's already judged on the cross, and we can love them despite what they're into. We could go on the premise of the ruler of this world is cast out. He has no authority, he has no right. And basically the devil got an eviction notice and we get to carry it out. We have the power and authority to, you know? Yeah. So, so we have that premise and, oh no, the world's so dark, let's hide in the church. <laughs> Seriously, the devil has no right to anything. He's finished, he's done, he's cast out. See, it says in, um, well, I'm going to get that. And now check this out. It says, if I'm lifted up, I'll draw all people to myself. Jesus was lifted up on the cross. Now salvation is for everyone. Yes. And when he's lifted up and exalted in your life, he will draw everyone around you to himself. Come, Come on. on. See, oh. that's the message of the gospel. It's an all-in gospel, too. Yeah. It's not a gospel of, well, I said the prayer, and I said my prayers this morning. It's a gospel of sold out living for this yes. thing. Yeah. See, Jesus paid for all of you. He didn't pay for a part of you. He yes. didn't, like... Crucify his pinky on the cross. Come on. Like, I just want this much of right? you. <laughs> no, Jesus paid for all of you. He died your death so you can live his life. Yeah, yeah. Come on. See, do you realize Jesus, he literally became your sin on the cross. Like, I'm... Um, ah. Thank you, Jesus. Even going here, I see like a thousand rabbit trails I could go down. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay on topic because I'm like, ah, Jesus... I, I want to see Jesus get what he paid for. Mm -hmm. yeah. He paid for the world, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. That's his inheritance. He deserves. He's the only one worthy of this world. Yeah. He's the only one worthy to rule, to reign. Come he's on. the only one worthy to have influence. The devil's scum. He's finished. He's done. He's cast out. He has yeah. no chance. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. But, but check this out. It says in uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So what that means is Jesus became your sin on the cross so you could become his, his righteousness here on this earth. See, he took your life so you could live his life. That's why Paul says, no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. It's an all-in gospel. And this all-in gospel, you see, when Jesus, when the devil comes, you know, he said, the devil's coming. But he has nothing in me. If you're a believer, that's your position. That's who yeah. you, that's, that's you. The devil has nothing in you. He has, you know, it's good. And you can live from that place and you can destroy the works of the devil just in your, you know. And it's really easy because it's not even like the way we think of warfare, you know. Like there's all these pictures of warfare in the Old Testament, New Testament. But in the New Covenant, it's loving someone regardless. It's laying down mm -hmm. your life for other one. Our warfare is enjoying God regardless of the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Our yeah. warfare is where the devil is not allowed to rob us of our intimacy mm -hmm. with him. Yeah. And our warfare is taking captives and taking prisoners who are bound up by the devil and bringing them yes. into life and bringing them into the joy and yeah. bliss yes. of the kingdom yes. of God. Yes. If you're not all in, then you're going to have trouble doing that. Yeah. That's true. So. So good. So Lord, I just thank you, God. You're amazing. Mm. Jesus. Let's see up. First John, um, verse 3, verse... Eight. It says, He who sins is of the devil, and the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So the purpose of Jesus being manifested, like the purpose the Son of God was manifested to us, the reason why you have Jesus in your life was so he could destroy the works of the devil around you. Yeah. So the reason Jesus came in his earthly mission was destroying the works of the devil. The devil had authority through sin, sickness came in through sin, death, disease, all that mm -hmm. stuff. You know? He, he messed stuff up. So Jesus came destroying his works on the cross, and now he lives in you to destroy the works of the devil around you and in your life. It's good. See, when the Son of God is manifest in you, the devil is going to be destroyed. Like, it's... So, and it's cool, because, like, Jesus has all authority in... I'll turn to Matthew. All over the Bible. All over the place. Uh, turn to Matthew chapter 28. It says, All authority in verse uh, 18, Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven or on earth. If Jesus has all authority, that means the devil has how much? Zero. None. Zero. <laughs> right? <laughs> It says, go therefore make disciples of the nations, back of the nations. They say like turn nations into disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you to, and lo, I'm with you even to the end of the age. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is with us, tells us to disciple nations, and tells us he has all authority, right? That means the devil has no authority. The devil has no rights. He's finished. He's done. <laughs> and here's something amazing. He, he said... He has authority, but He gives us all authority. It says in uh, Luke chapter 10. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so He basically tell, told um, this uh, verse 9, He told the disciples to go out, heal the sick, and say, The kingdom of heaven has come near to you. The kingdom of heaven is Christ's reign. It just casts out sickness. Healing the sick is an amazing demonstration of the rule and reign of God. See, that's a demonstration of His love and His nature. He's a healer. Like It's funny because we kind of like put... Like, a lot of people will put healing on the back burner, but that's like a primary way Jesus ministered, and it's a primary demonstration that the kingdom truly is at hand. Come on. Yeah. You know? I believe sickness is from the devil. Came in through the fall, came in through sin. So I don't think... See, if Adam and Eve had a cold before the fall, then... <laughs> you know? I might change my opinion, but it says everything God created was good. Mm -hmm. Amen. So... And, so in verse 17, the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. 
Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's crazy. Hallelujah. I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and how much? Oh, like yell it, yell it. Oh, 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 Let's get oh, Russian charismatic. Oh, oh, oh. The oh, power of the enemy. <laughs> Nothing shall by any means hurt you. See, these are promises. You see, these are. That's what Jesus said, and this is the seventy. This isn't the disciples. See, people will be like, "Oh, that's just the apostles." No, these weren't apostles. These were just seventy people who believed in Jesus before Jesus died for them. They're not even born again yet, and he's telling them that. We're born again. We have Jesus in us. It says, nevertheless, don't rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, look, you're, you're, you're a citizen of heaven. You're a citizen of this kingdom. Rejoice in that. And rejoice the fact that you're a son of God. It's not about, oh, look how bad I am. I just cast out. No, it's him. You know? He's saying, don't rejoice in this. Rejoice in him. And when we stay in that place of rejoicing of who we are in him and the fact that we're loved, we're beloved, we're his kids, we're yeah. citizens of the kingdom of heaven, in that place, it keeps us in a position where we can always manifest that. We can always destroy the works of the devil. Come on. You know? Yeah. It's good. And I'm going to close Revelation 12. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of people are waiting for this to happen. I'm actually convinced it did. Yeah. Like, I know that if this contradicts your theology, I'm sorry, this is just what I personally believe, so I'm just going to preach it. But it says, um, Revelation 12, 1, it says, Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, mm -hmm. and on her head garland of twelve stars, and then being the child, she cried out in labor and in pain and to give birth. I forgot where it was, but I was just reading through Isaiah, and there's actually this picture of the woman being Israel and the, a male child who's going to rule with a rod of iron, you know? But it says, Another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. He, his tail threw a third of the stars from heaven and threw them down to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth and devour the child. And it's a capital C there, so it's Jesus mm -hmm. who was soon to be born. She bore the male child who was to rule the all nations with a rod of iron. And the child was caught up to God and his throne. So the devil comes to destroy this child that this woman had birthed. And then this child goes up to heaven, right? Would you say that's a picture of what Jesus did, right? Are we waiting for that to happen? No. no. no that's Jesus. We're waiting for him to come, and he's going to rule. It says right there, and the child was, or it says, who was to rule the nations with the rod of iron. So that means he's coming back to reign with the rod of iron. He's actually coming back. But for right now, he's caught up to God, right? So the woman fled in the wilderness where a place was prepared for her by God, and she was fed there... Uh, 1,260 days. So I'm not going to get into like the history of Israel and what happened in that time. I believe this is heavily connected to the persecution, the destruction of Jerusalem, like a lot of crazy stuff that happened. But here's the really important part we should get out of this. It says, And a war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. And they, but they did not prevail nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. Yeah. Remember Jesus said when he's going to the cross, he said, now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be now. cast out. Mm -hmm. Right there it says the devil was cast out of heaven. Sun yeah. goes up, the devil comes down, right? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast with him. So the devil's on the earth, yeah. He was cast to the world. He has no right to heaven anymore. He has no access. He has nothing. He was cut off. Mm -hmm. See? Well, what gave him access? Sin. He had authority because we gave him the authority. Jesus paid for it all. So there's... Now listen to this. It says, I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come now. for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before God day and night has been cast down. So you have this thing, the devil accusing mankind before God day and night, you know? Yeah. Jesus. 
he's cast down. Well, why? The blood of Jesus covers us. There's nothing left to accuse us of. And Jesus paid for the whole world. So it doesn't matter what degree of sin. It doesn't matter where the world's at. It matters that Jesus' blood was enough to cover the whole world. Yeah. Yeah. So the accuser had nothing left to accuse. He was cast down. He was snuffed out of heaven. Just no. And the angels too. His angels too. His demons, you know. Yeah. It says, but it says now is salvation. You see, in um, the beginning of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now. See, that's right now. It says, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of the Christ have come. See, the kingdom is at hand. It's here. It's now. It's reigning over our lives. And we're yeah. to demonstrate that to the world because it's coming to reign the whole world. Because Jesus is coming to reign with the rod of iron. He's yeah. coming to reign and rule over the nations as a righteous king and judge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, and it says, now, I love this part, verse 11. Rulers cast out, we all agree. It said, devil's cast out. He yeah. has no place. Agree. That means he has no authority, period. Mm -hmm. yeah. It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives unto death. Mm -hmm. So the blood of the lamb covers us. See, we overcome the enemy. The enemy's cast out, and he's here, but... We overcome them by the blood of the Lamb. We'll see, it, it, not, it removes your sin. It doesn't just cover your sin. It makes you righteous, makes you pure, and it makes it so the devil has nothing in you. He has no authority over you. He has nothing because he had authority through sin, right? Yeah. Blood and bulls and goats couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Jesus' blood purifies, it purifies you. It, it says in Hebrews it's enough to perfect your conscience. When you live with a perfect conscience on the Lord and you live with nothing in you that's of Him, but you're living for Him, you're all in, not just pinky in. Mm -hmm. You see, you live in that place, and the word of your testimony holds power. You know, so it's this, the um, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's like when we hold yeah. the testimony of what Christ did, that's the gospel. So we're covered by the blood of the Lamb, and we carry the gospel, and we don't love our lives to our the, to the death. Meaning, it's not about us; it's for our King, it's for Him, and we live our lives in that place of intimacy with God, to where it's all about Him. See, that's where we overcome the devil everywhere we go. We trump Him. See, we're light. We're the light of the world because Christ is in us. See, so I'm gonna end with that. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank you. I preach this, but I pray, I thank you for allowing us to demonstrate it. Because this message, God, has to be a message left out. It can't be just words. It can't just be uh, my theology on you or your kingdom, God. It has, it has to manifest, God. So I pray that when we go out today, that you'll set up, that you'll free people up, God. I pray that you'll just give us a supernatural love for people regardless, God. That you'll you. give us eyes to see people as you yes. see them, God. Yeah. Eyes to see them covered in your blood. Yeah. Eyes to see what you paid for and the price you paid because they're worth it, God. Can you say the word, God? Jesus. I just thank you, God. We just exalt you and we know, Lord, you're lifted up. So we go out there to lift you up and yeah. just ask you that you draw all people to yourself mm -hmm. around us. Just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus. Wow. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, I just feel like a loyalty on you. Like, I just feel like you're really loyal to the people that are like, like in your sphere of influence. Like, if you care about them, like, you're really loyal to them. Like, you, your friends are like amazing. Like, I just feel like, um, yeah, like God's just um, giving you such a big heart just to love on people. Like, and it, like, even you have the sign, but I feel like it's just really just natural for you. Like, you don't need to be a sign. You just love. Uh, I also feel like, uh, yeah, I just feel like you're just so amazing. And like, uh, this guy's doing this for free, too. Yeah. 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 Yeah.